In the 1985 blockbuster film, Back to the Future, a young Marty McFly must somehow find a way to power his time machine, a DeLorean car, to get him back to the future. Well, fortunately for Marty, his good friend, a scientist, Doc Brown, has devised a way to capture a lightning strike and channel it into his car to power his vehicle to get him back to the future. Well, what if we were able to harness the power of intellectual lightning? What if we could harness intellectual lightning to power a brighter future? Well, I see some people wondering, well, what the heck is he talking about, intellectual lightning? Well, intellectual lightning is that, is that brief neurochemical moment in the brain where there's heightened activity with neurons, and there's a sudden glimpse into the future, a glimpse of clarity into the future. And it's often accompanied by a sense of euphoria and a sense of optimism. Now, some people refer to this moment of intellectual lightning as an aha moment. Others in the world of psychology and science refer to this as creative insight. Yet others in the world of religion commonly refer to this as an epiphany. As a matter of fact, the word epiphany comes from the Greek word, oh, I should have not had that so you could try to figure this out here, epiphaneia. Epiphaneia means a striking appearance. Now everybody here has experienced intellectual lightning at some point in their life. As a matter of fact, the idea for this talk was a direct result of a lightning strike that I experienced while driving my car and nearly went off the road. But it was a convergence of the, the, the notion is my, with my education in psychology and my experience in economic development as an entrepreneur, all of these notions came together to produce this, 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 this concept. Now, you might ask, well, how, how does one harness intellectual lightning to produce a new outcome? How does this happen? Well, in every community, we have infrastructure. Infrastructure to facilitate the function of the society. We have transportation infrastructure in the form of roads and bridges. We've got telecommunic telecommunications infrastructure. We've got the power grid for electricity. We've got waterways and sewage systems. Well, what about building an infrastructure for entrepreneurship? An, uh, an infrastructure to harness great ideas and turn them into something real and tangible. And that's why my partner and I wrote the book, The Lemonade Stand, a few years ago. So many great ideas went untouched and undeveloped that there had to be a way to develop this, to find a way to transduce that from the ideas, intellectual lightning, to something real and something tangible. And more importantly, that's why a group of educators right here in Lowndes County, as well as, as entrepreneurs, started what's called the Lemonhead Movement. And the Lemonhead Movement is all about empowering and inspiring the next generation of entrepreneur. So why is this important? Why do I bring this topic up today? Well, we're in the second decade of the 21st century. However, we're still, our perceptions and perspectives are still deeply rooted in the last century. Graduates will leave school back in, at one point in time and get a good job with a, with a company and stay there for the duration of the career. But that's not happening anymore. In fact, in the future, many graduates will probably be self-employed. In fact, they'll probably work in an interdependent network of other self-employed individuals and small businesses to satisfy different needs in different marketplaces. And those that do get hired, or the, the companies that do hire, they want to hire an entrepreneurial workforce. They want to hire entrepreneurs. They want to hire a self-motivated workforce that constantly embraces problems and challenges and ultimately innovates within that organization. And innovation becomes even more important when dealing with the global economy. Those, those communities, those countries that innovate will stay ahead of the curve. Now, I mentioned the word innovation, and you know, commonly when you think of innovation, you think of you know, the next great mobile device, or um, maybe a, the next generation of fuel to power, power vehicles. But innovation could be something as local as satisfying an unmet need in a community and coming up with a solution for that. Now, in my, my travels, uh, I, I come across so many communities across the country and this scene is all too often apparent. It's a, 
a, a, a abandoned strip mall or commercial shopping center with grass growing through the cracks in the parking lot. And it's indicative of a down economy, high unemployment. It's just not a very good site. Well, what can we do to change this future? What can we do to change this outcome for our children and our grandchildren? How do we, what do we do? What can we do? Well, I believe that it all starts with education and teaching the entrepreneurial mindset. Now, some may believe, well, you know, not everyone's an entrepreneur. You know, you, you can't teach entrepreneurship. Well, I'm here to tell you you can. And I've seen it happen. I have, I've seen it happen many times right here in Loudoun. And it's important to realize that the entrepreneurship is a mindset. It's not necessarily a discipline. It's a mindset. You know, we teach history in school not for the sole purpose of producing historians, but to develop a historical perspective in the mind of the students. We teach science in school not solely to produce scientists, but to gain a greater understanding of the world around us. Likewise, we teach math not only to produce mathematicians, but to develop the analytical part of our brains. So why not teach entrepreneurship? Teaching entrepreneurship to develop receptivity to opportunity, to be able to know how to take great ideas and make them turn into something real and something tangible. We all experience intellectual lightning. We all have great ideas. And in fact, it starts at a very, very young age. In fact, the probably the first manifestation that we most commonly see when it comes to uh, entrepreneurship or, or uh, intellectual lightning is in the form of a lemonade stand. You know, in every community around the country, it, you see these out in the streets. It's a hot summer day, and the kids are playing in the street, and they're dehydrated. And what better cure or remedy for this summertime ailment than a tall glass of ice-cold lemonade? It's a simple problem with a simple solution, but it happens organically, and it happens everywhere. You know, a few years ago, um, I was an assistant coaching my son's baseball team, and they, uh, they had to raise money. They had to do a fundraising campaign for, for the league, for equipment and everything. And, and uh, they were asked to go out door to door and ask for donations. Well, well, the boys were in my kitchen that afternoon, and we told them, hey, guys, go out and start uh, <laughs> ringing doorbells. They were all moaning and groaning, oh, we don't want to. It's too hot outside. Can't we just play video games? And uh, all of a sudden, my five-year-old daughter was in the room. And you could almost see the lightning strike at that moment. I didn't know what happened. She grabbed a stack of papers and a few markers and ran out to the back porch and started scribbling away in, in the back porch, like she always did. And about an hour later, I went out to the car to get ready for practice for that, for that, um, uh, that afternoon. And I noticed a bunch of papers were taped to the lamppost outside by the street. And I assumed, oh, the town must be having a parade or a street washing this weekend, so I better move the car. Well, I walked up to the, uh, to the paper, and uh, it said money. <laughs> Please put money on this paper. Now, I stood there for a second, and it took, it didn't, it took me a while to put the, the two pieces together. But this was my daughter's little innovation. She had a strike of intellectual lighting, and she innovated even on a small scale. Whether This was her way to solve the problem of raising money for the baseball league. But, but here's the thing. So um, whether it's a lemonade stand or if it's taping a piece of paper to a lamppost, it starts at a young age. This stuff starts at a young age. So why wait? Why wait to start developing this until later in life? Why wait? And here's why. Because as soon, the sooner the entrepreneurial mindset is established and developed, the sooner the receptivity to opportunity exists. And the sooner the receptivity to opportunity exists, the opportunity to innovate goes up exponentially. So let's start at the top one more time. 
is the sooner the entrepreneurial mindset is developed and established, the, the sooner we can develop the mind to look at problems as opportunities and know what to do with them. Just as an architect looks at a blueprint and can see the finished structure, or a musician can look at a piece of sheet music and hear the melody and sense the, the mood of the, the composition. The sooner we, we teach that and develop that, the sooner the receptivity to opportunity exists. The sooner that the looking at problems as opportunities it, it happens. And, and from that, from that moment, we can develop the opportunity to innovate. So how do we do this? How do we teach this? This entrepreneurial mindset that I'm talking about. Well, um, I, I mentioned uh, teachers here in Loudoun and some entrepreneurs developed a curriculum uh, around the book that, um, that we authored. And it's based, it's based on 13 core principles of entrepreneurship, the entrepreneurial perspective. And, and it, it involves hands-on activities, presentations to the class, real life skills being employed. And some of those core principles are optimism. Optimism. Being able to see an outcome and knowing that it can be achieved and be accomplished and reaching that, that outcome. Outcome-based thinking. Now, this is, this is focusing on that vision, on that outcome, on that, the, 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 that idea, and working towards getting that done, not focusing on the effort to get it done, but focusing on the end game. Resourcefulness, making the most of what you have. You're given these resources, what can we do with this? And embracing problems. Without problems, we would have no opportunity. We'd have no innovation if we had no problems. If we lived in a new utopia, there would be no innovation. There would be absolutely nothing to solve. I also propose a shift in the way we think in higher education. That entrepreneurship serves as the foundation for all aspects, all major areas of study in higher education. Whether it's, and, and here, here's an important fact, uh, or a perspective. You know, most of us uh, have, have categorize entrepreneurship education in the same category as business education. And they're very different disciplines. They're very different. In fact, I know many, uh, I know many um, uh, business people that are not entrepreneurial. And many non-business people that are very entrepreneurial, whether they're school administrators or nonprofit leaders. You could be entrepreneurial regardless of what you do in, in your life. So having this foundation for entrepreneurship, the entrepreneurship mindset uh, in, in, the, in the higher education space, allows you to be more receptive for opportunity during those years of school. But even after, after graduate, it makes you, after you graduate, it makes you even more employable and self-employable if that's the route that you have to go. So ultimately, when, when we develop the entrepreneurial mindset, the, the, the ability to think and to do from an entrepreneurial perspective, ultimately our brain, our cognition transforms to become a lightning rod for opportunity a lightning rod for opportunity. We're hyper, we all know people that are hyper um, receptive. They see opportunity every, oh, couldn't we do this? Or what if we do this? What if we, what if we held a TEDx event right here in Loudoun? But knowing what to take, how to take that idea and turn it to something real is where the magic is. And that's, that can be developed. That can be developed and that can be trained. Now, it's important to realize that you know, have, being able to be receptive to ideas and opportunities and turn something real also requires, in many cases, a support network. A support network to help develop that idea, connecting experience to ideas, to develop that into something real and tangible. And part of the, this Lemonhead movement that, that exists here in Loudoun is something called the Local Loudoun Lemonhead Council, which is a group of entrepreneurs that work with other entrepreneurs to help them succeed by sharing their perspectives, their insights, their failures, and their successes with other entrepreneurs to help them develop their idea and turn it to something real and tangible. And it works, we do this with nonprofit organizations too. It's not only, it's not only businesses. There are other resources and communities as well that are part of this infrastructure for entrepreneurship, including small business development centers or incubators or economic development departments. But all these things are so important to help turn those ideas into something real. We can't let those ideas just die in the vine. So now, we have this infrastructure for entrepreneurship established from the, the point of being receptive to opportunity with the, the education component established through the support mechanism to turn that, to develop into something real and tangible. If we have this established, 
The possibilities are endless. The possibilities are endless. Think about it. This old parking lot, to most people, is a abandoned uh, decay of a community. That's what most of us see, just as uh, we look at a blueprint and we're not an architect, we just see lines and, and, uh, and, and, and straight lines. But to someone who's trained, someone whose brain is trained in entrepreneurship in the entrepreneurial perspective, sees a world of amazing possibilities. This is an opportunity to do something incredible. It's exciting. Now, the good news is that this infrastructure exists and exists today. It's called the Lemonhead Movement. It started right here in Loudoun County, but it needs to be implemented and it can be implemented in any community, any town around the country or around the world. In fact, educators today can go and download a free curriculum, workbooks, everything needed to start teaching entrepreneurship education today from lemonheadsrule.org. And entrepreneurs can start their own local Lemonhead Council. The framework exists on lemonheadsrule.org. So now, imagine, so if, if, we could, if we can start developing the cognition of students to be receptive to opportunity and to know how to turn things into real, tangible results, and we have a support infrastructure existing to help those ideas turn into something real, well then, we can harness intellectual lightning to power a brighter future. Thank you.